This question is just some more basic algebra. So if we pull this out, maybe on our scratch paper, we need to do this, 5x is equal to 20. So remember, when we want to solve for x, we follow the process of PEMDAS or GERMDAS, which means that we have to do the opposite of what we're kind of trying to uh, get out of the way. So our x, we need to be alone. So here, what's going on? I see that my five and my x are being multiplied together. But with GERMDAS, everything comes in pairs, right? Addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. So we're doing algebra and we're trying to strip things away from our variable, we need to do the opposite. So the opposite of multiplication is that division. So that's how we're gonna make the five go away. We divide both sides by five and that's gonna give us x is equal to four. Now that is not an answer. I'm surprised it's not an answer because the SAT does this very often where we are in the habit of solving for X and so they put that as an answer. But what the question actually wants is something like this, 15X. Now it doesn't make it any harder, we just take 15 and then we put our X value which is four into the equation and 15 times four, you can use your calculator uh, if you want, 15 ugh, times four is 60. So there you go. That's the answer, that is the final answer of the question. But normally they do put that trap answer where the X value that you found is there. So it's very tempting because in your head, especially if you're just learning algebra, you're kind of being trained like a robot or a dog to just every time you see X equals, you just are like, oh, mission accomplished, algebra over. But as we get later in the section, they're gonna probably put, give us that trap more often where we can't just stop short and, and solve the question that we would like to answer. It's much more about making sure we give the essay what it wants, even if what it wants seems totally random like it is here. Now, some of you may have noticed that we can just take the original expression that we were given, 5x equals 20, and think, okay, well, in order to get 5x to become 15x, we would multiply by 3. So we can do that to both sides, right? We can do that to the 5x, and it becomes 15x. And if we do that to the 20, it becomes 60, right? 20 times 3 is 60. That's great, I'm glad you noticed that. And that's actually very helpful for future questions where sometimes it, it isn't really efficient to solve for X. It's better to think of the X as like part of some bigger group and to work with that bigger group instead of splitting it apart. Even if we can, we might not want to get X individually. It just might be like a fraction or a decimal or something that's harder to work with. So it's probably better in certain cases to work with the group, but it really depends on the question. And so here I would say just if, if you're just learning algebra and your habit is to solve for X, Go for it, just do it. But remember that the question might ask you for something different like it did here. So always go back and reread that question so that you don't make the careless mistake of giving them what you think the answer should be when they ask for something slightly different. Just give them what they want and you will get most of the questions right.